Welcome to Inside Bremerton. This is the City of Bremerton's video newsletter, focusing on issues and topics important to its citizens. We are downtown Bremerton and things are really heating up. It feels like summer today. We're going to take a look at what's going on downtown Bremerton. Things you already know about, but maybe things you don't. Like, what's going on with business? What about the arts? What about food? We're gonna to talk to lots of people today that know all about this kind of things and special events galore all summer downtown. We're overlooking our beautiful Harborside Fountain Park, which is one of three downtown parks. Harborside Fountain Park, we have the Memorial Plaza right on Pacific, and of course our boardwalk. It is a shining star in our park system. So stay with us, we'll be right back where we talk about all these things going on downtown Bremerton. Stay with us, we'll be right back. My first guest today as we walk around downtown Bremerton is City Councilman Jerry McDonald. Jerry represents this part of Bremerton, downtown Bremerton over into Manette. Uh, welcome, Jerry. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, so, Jerry, talk to us about living downtown. You live downtown, don't you? I do. I, we we uh, live in the Harborside condominiums. We moved here almost eight years ago. We moved in uh, August of 07. We moved into the units, and there was only 34 people that were there at the time, and we're full now. But it's, now it's full. Okay. But it's been, uh, it's been a journey. There's a lot of things that have happened, and a lot of things that are really right on the cusp of happening right uh -huh. now. Uh-huh. That's great. So when you moved in um, in the early 2000s, not a lot going on downtown. You've seen some change, and as you mentioned, things are right at the cusp. So tell us about when you moved here, what was downtown lacking that now we have? There are more stores downtown. We've, the, the, the movie theater wasn't there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's still a lot of stuff that we need, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, that was right, you know, right at the when the things were weren't very good financially for the whole country. Exactly. And uh, so, as I said, things are really starting to improve. We've got uh, uh, s we've got several stores that are just about to open. We've got two breweries that are. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to open at the end of this month, but it looks like towards the end of June, definitely before the beer fest. This was on July 18th, but it will be. They will be open. One of them is uh, right next to the Roxy Theater. The uh, Wobbly Hops, uh, as you face the Roxy, they're immediately to the right. And then uh, Lovecraft Brewery is on 5th Street, up on uh, right in the Rice Fergus building. So yeah, they're, they're cool. close by and it's going to be, I think it'll be really helpful for our tourism mm -hmm. because it's, it's a reason to come here, another reason to come here. And there's exactly. lots of reasons where we can't have to, where people would come here. Mm -hmm. So um, we had this debate in the early 2000s as the condos were being built and people were moving in. What has to come first, the businesses to draw the people to live downtown or is it the people who need to live downtown then the businesses will come? That's always been a debate. I think the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, there's, you know, you know the businesses aren't going to come unless the people are here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but right now we've got probably in the neighborhood of 800 housing units that are coming to town in the next three or four that's years. That's correct. And uh, that's we've correct. got the 606 that's going over at the theater garage. That's 71 units. We've got Spyglass, which is 81 units, I think, which is at the end of the Manette Bridge. There's another hundred and something, but down by the uh, Evergreen Rotary Park. There's 20 units uh, where the old uh, Night Shift Tavern used to be. That's, they're going to be starting to demolish that shortly. Uh, oh, and then there's the, the, the three towers, one of which may, I, I've, I've heard rumors might be a hotel hmm. down at the end of 6th Street. So there's, there's an awful lot of stuff really starting to happen. Mm -hmm. we, we, we need the anchor tenant in town, the store that's going to be open past 6 o'clock that draws people in and that drawing people in will will make it easier for business to move mm -hmm. in so there's things to do mm -hmm. and we're getting there you know and then the other thing is parking so parking's always been um, 
you know, we say it and we smile, but really it's one of those, oh, parking. And really, if you come downtown to go to the movie, you got free parking. There's parking right below Sea yep. Film, um, free if you're going to the cinema. Um, street parking, it, you know, depends on the time of day, but there is parking. If you are coming down for an extended period of time, we want you to use the Washington um, and Burwell, fourth, fourth, fourth and Washington. Garage. Um, it's our city parking garage. You can certainly find parking in there if you're coming down to one of the many events uh, scheduled for the summer. Stay tuned, we're gonna talk about that in our, one of our other segments. And, and there's also parking, you know, the, the, Penny, the old Penny's garage That's has correct. parking in there. I, I've been told that oftentimes that uh, with the, the hiring of the, the more shipyard folks that that gets pretty full but there's still it's still available it's mm -hmm. it's it's not as bad as everybody says it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a really cute little boutique called purpose on the corner of fourth and pacific that is really got some tongues wagging they have um, expanded recently over on the other side of the water in kirkland but it started in Bremerton, and it is a cute store. Um, one that is certainly worth everyone taking a look at because it's affordable. Um, it's all about um, helping um, empower women. Some of the jewelry is made in third world countries that um, help women make money in um, other parts of this world. So. There's things to do and places to be, and we are standing with Jerry over our beautiful Bremerton Marina, and we are also right outside of Anthony's, which is a very good spot to eat. You know, and as we stand here on a Friday afternoon, there's quite a few boats in the marina, and we um, were encouraged yeah. that um, more boaters and more boaters are gonna be coming and spending the weekend here. The and port, it port out. is making a real effort to get boaters here to come and, and, and moor permanently. Mm -hmm. This is probably one of the finest marinas in, in, on Puget Sound. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, it has a little bit of a tide periodically, but it's nothing that's uh, it's nothing that you, you can't work around. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, as I said, it, it is one of the finest marinas in the, in, in Puget Sound. Uh, Jerry, thanks for joining us, and stay with us. We'll be right back as we continue our conversation about downtown Bremerton. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Inside Bremerton. We're on our beautiful boardwalk. Joining me now is Michael Goodnow. Michael is the president of the Downtown Business Association in Bremerton. Welcome, Michael. Hi, thanks. We are, you can see behind us, the fabulous Turner Joy, which is another attraction that we want people to check out. Whole nother segment. Um, very cool uh, museum place to visit. So, Michael, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you lived in Bremerton? I've been in Bremerton for about 13 years mm -hmm. and uh, moved here right before I retired from the Navy. From the Navy. So, yeah. so like a lot of folks, the Navy brought Michael here. Michael fell in love with it and said, this is it for me, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, great. So Michael, tell us about the Downtown Business Association. What's, what's the purpose and who's involved in that? Uh, the Downtown Bremerton Association is Oh, a, Downtown Bremerton. Oh, it, I misspoke. It's okay. Thank it's you a, for correcting uh, it, me. It is a business association, but it's a network of okay. downtown businesses. And, Excellent. You know, uh, Bremerton kind of suffered when um, you know big shopping centers uh, like right. malls opened up and those malls have uh, consolidated uh, management to help them um, uh, be uh, more successful and things like that and mm -hmm. we look at the downtown Bremerton Association as a um, uh, organization to help uh, bring businesses together make them more successful even just working on things like what are common uh, business hours to be open downtown. Excellent, excellent. There's a monthly meeting, I'm sure, and you yeah. meet downtown and... Our board of directors meets, and then there's also a meeting for the business owners. And mm -hmm. uh, that information you can find on our uh, website, uh, downtownbremerton.org, 
or on our uh, Facebook page, um, which is Downtown Bremerton. Yeah, excellent. So the Downtown Bremerton Association is involved in lots of events, not only promoting business and encouraging business, but uh, promoting events and Absolutely. sponsoring events. And a lot of those events happen in the summertime. Yeah. First of all, I want to talk about the concerts on the boardwalk. Absolutely. So uh, this is the first year uh, that the Downtown Bremerton Association is taking on the uh, summer concert series on the uh, boardwalk here. Um, there's a new stage being put in just down the way from where we're standing. And um, we're having uh, concerts every Saturday evening starting um, on the first Saturday in July, which is the 4th of July. So you can come on down, listen to some music while you wait for uh, the fireworks, for fireworks and, and right? get your, get your uh, prime spot to watch that and then every Saturday through uh, the end of August. Wow. So. What time are those going to start? Uh, it's not everything uh, is not set in stone yet but okay. we believe it's going to be from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. We should have some food vendors down here. Great. We're looking at having a, a beer and beverage garden up uh, uh, set up on the, the roof here and it, nice. it should be a, a nice Saturday evening. Yeah, very nice. Historically, the concerts were Friday nights and mm -hmm. um, I think moving to Saturday might give people yeah. a little leeway. It's a big partnership with uh, the port and the marina here and uh, they're looking to bring people uh, to spend the weekend in our beautiful marina mm -hmm. and for boaters to be able to get here on a Friday to see the concerts tight. tough. So, and Fridays are busy, you know, your mm -hmm. people are uh, wrapping up their work week and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping this will be uh, uh, family friendly. People can come down on a Saturday evening mm -hmm. and en enjoy the boardwalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of fun, lots of fun. And Saturday nights, great, uh, great time, great yep. food see lots of people in the community Absolutely. awesome 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 so another thing that's happening this summer is the brew fest and historic like uh what is a third one fourth one I, th I think it's the fourth one yep yep and and it's moving to the boardwalk it's coming down to the boardwalk so mm -hmm. um they'll be um taking advantage of the stage that's being put in um they'll save some uh, money um to uh with fencing and things like that and shutting down uh, the downtown area, so uh, Pacific Avenue will remain open. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. And you know, the boardwalk's a great spot. It's um, pretty much contained, and that's what the brew fest needs. Um, so it's moving to the boardwalk, and I think I think it's a great idea. Yeah, great so, idea. And that's the um, uh, Washington Beer Commission that puts that on, uh -huh. and that'll be uh, Saturday, July 18th. July 18th, so don't miss it. And once again, we'll mention parking because there will be street parking. We have a parking garage on uh, 4th and Pacific, so get yourself parked and yeah. come down and en enjoy lots of activities. You can see the shops, try out some fabulous beer. And we mentioned in our previous segment that there's two breweries gonna be open Absolutely. downtown. So um, I bet they'll be peddling their wares yeah, down here as well. They'll definitely be open in time for the brew festival. Yeah, so, yeah. of course they will, they better be. Yeah. That's yeah. A, like a perfect goal. So of course, after the beer fest is a wine fest. Mm -hmm that's uh, put on by the Harrison Hospital Foundation yes. in our Kitsap mm -hmm. Conference Center. Now that's in our other beautiful park, our Fountain mm -hmm. Park, and tell us a little bit about that. Um, so that's a, it's an annual one. I'm not even sure how many years now that's been. I feel like this might be their eighth year. Uh, it's on August 8th, it's a Saturday. Uh, tickets are on sale right now, and if you buy your ticket before July 31st, it's only $45. I believe uh, day of tickets go up to as much as $60 and it does uh, has sold out in the past yep but basically the fountain park is just full of wineries and uh, local food um, establishments and um, you get to roam around and sample wine and um, yeah. sample bites and there's uh, music also so it's a really lovely day and yeah. it benefits the harrison medical center foundation yeah great great event um so michael we also the uh, downtown bremerton association is getting involved in first friday mm -hmm. Uh, we historically have called it Art Walk, but First Friday is kind of a, a, almost a national event. It kind of is. A lot, a lot of uh, communities do a, a special night uh, to uh, get people together, and it's, it's uh, nice to get uh, folks downtown, see neighbors and friends, and um, it can be a lot of bustling activity on the streets, uh, mm -hmm. especially for that night. Mm -hmm. Although we're seeing more and more people 
days, nights, weekends uh, in downtown. Uh, the first Friday is definitely a special night and mm -hmm. the galleries get involved and lots of shops have late hours and they'll sometimes do special yeah. um, programs or art installations. Yeah, great fun, great fun. So for more information on the Downtown Bremerton Association, go to Facebook and like them on Facebook. You can keep abreast of everything that they've got um, scheduled or their website one more time. Downtownbremerton.org. Perfect. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're going to go talk to Amy Burnett about art, of course. Stay with us. Welcome back to Inside Bremerton. We're on 4th Street and I'm with my friend Amy Burnett. You know, um, since I came to town and mm -hmm. Amy's been in town, whenever I introduce myself, they always go, are you related to Amy? And I say, yes, of course we are. <laughs> I, say, I say the same thing. We might as well be related. Yeah. We've been around that long. We've been, we've been friends for a long <laughs> time. Have. Amy, um, you are the face of art in Bremerton, but I want to give folks the background on how long have you owned this building right, be right behind us, the 4th Street? Well, as we speak, this is our 24 year anniversary. It's been that long and it's very hard to believe and we've been through a lot as you know. Yeah, yeah. Amy has had the whole building as her gallery. She's then moved downsized and let mm -hmm. other people have come front and center with their business. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ones we have now is of course the Purpose Boutique. Mm -hmm. and a fabulous, fabulous little store. We've mentioned it a few times. And Amy just told me they now have their own line of clothing that is being made in Texas, is that Being made in Texas, women in Texas. That's Being very, made in the United cool. States. Very cool. <laughs> um, Amy, give us a little bit of history. What, how, what was your interest in Bremerton? You're a Bremerton girl, but Belfair girl, you're kind of a Bremerton Belfair. What was your interest in being downtown? Okay, that is a very good question. It was 25 years ago that I decided to invest in Bremerton. I advertised nationally and I was represented in galleries throughout the United States. I thought that uh, I could advertise minutes from Seattle by ferry and you could get to me and I opened up the business and the first year and the second year we were one of the top earning galleries in the United States. It's hard to believe. Amy, of course, is nationally known, and her prints and her paintings are absolutely outstanding. Yes. Um, if you're lucky enough to have one, um, it's it's a little treasure. Amy's had lots of residents in her building. There's been guitar teaching, mm -hmm. um, uh, ceramics, mm -hmm. and um, boutiques, mm -hmm. um, other artists. Um, what's the fellow's name who was in the basement for a long time that did the life drawing and life sculpture? Uh, Juan, Juan Rodriguez. Juan Rodriguez. And we also had a dance company downstairs. That's right. For four years, Whitman and Dancers. That's right. A major dance company and Ike Parker donated lumber for a, a raised floor for the dancers. That was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And so Amy, you thank you so much for mentoring. You know, she's a mentor for businesses and really an open door mm -hmm. for folks that want to get started. And um, and her most recent endeavor has been Pyrex. Mm -hmm. How long has the Pyrex Museum been in existence? Uh, we had a Pyrex Museum for ten years. We were featured on that TV show Evening Magazine five times. <laughs> We've been in two Seattle Magazine articles that just exploded, but it got so big that um, I would like to retire, and I can't take 1,500 pieces of Pyrex home, so <laughs> for the past few months, the Pyrex has been s for sale. Uh-huh, so. wow. So great deals on Pyrex, but the coolest thing mm -hmm. is, as you go into Amy's gallery, um, and you're looking at the Pyrex, she'll get you on videotape, because she does mm -hmm. have a program that runs on mm -hmm. BCAT, what do you remember about this Pyrex? It's cool how people talk about mm -hmm. grandmas, aunts mm -hmm. and uncles, my their own parents, mm -hmm. you know, mom always used this stuff. And it's it was in pretty much everybody's home in the United States, mm -hmm. I bet. Either their house or grandma's. And you get people in the Pyrex Museum and they take on an entire different character. 
they're fun and funny and and uh, they've st stories I should have kept a journal but I did film them but so you did film did them film and that, them. that that's, yes. that's a good thing so Amy let's talk about art downtown you were the first gallery to to open in downtown mm -hmm. Bremerton and then you did lead the cause for getting 4th Street named as the art district is that correct well, it's more than that. It's it's uh, Fourth and Pacific. Fourth and so, so, thank you. And it's uh, official arts district deemed so by the city council, mm -hmm. and it's one of the only official arts districts in this in the state. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. That's awesome. So, what are some other galleries that we have downtown Bremerton? Well, we've got a lot of besides galleries. We've got art related facilities and museums, mm -hmm. and of course, Collective Visions is very famous and and. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. How about, um, we call it uh, Art Walk, First Friday, mm -hmm. First Fridays of the month. Art Walk has um, gone from uh, hmm, just a little blip to a really big party. It's kind of lost mm -hmm. a little enthusiasm, but now we feel like it's coming back. Um, you know, it's, it's always a, a, a great gallery walk. I don't know of any gallery walk that's had less than 500 people visiting. Sometimes we get 5,000 people visiting on the streets. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, everyone should make it out on a Friday. It's always very fun. It's always very yeah, fun. Because it's not just an art walk. The businesses are open and a lot of the businesses downtown are displaying local art. Mm -hmm. So we want you to come down and see the um, art that's in a lot of our local businesses. You get to see your neighbors and mm -hmm. walk around mm -hmm. and enjoy a little bit of wine and um, talk to your friends right. as you're walking around town. Right. Amy, you are a joy. Thanks so much well, for having th us. Thank you for asking me to uh, talk. And Yeah. Thanks. So you don't want to miss the Pyrex Museum. You want to come and see Amy's on 4th Street, right next to the Chamber of Commerce, right in between the Chamber and Purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, come see the uh, not only her beautiful art, but she's now got some beautiful uh, mm -hmm. bracelets and um, the Pyrex. Yeah. So yeah. Amy, thanks so much. Thanks. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks. We're going down thanks. to the Admiral. Welcome back to Inside Bremerton. We're outside the Admiral Theater with my friend Brian Johnson. Brian's the executive director of the Admiral. Welcome. Thanks, Charlene. Brian's been with the Admiral for quite a few years and is exec director for how many? Three years now. But totally, how long have you been with the Admiral? Uh, about 16 years. Oh my goodness, right out of high school. No. No, right out of college. <laughs> right out of college. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Brian does a fabulous job at the Admiral Theater. Brian, give us a little bit of history, though, of the Admiral. It was a movie theater when you were growing up, even yeah. before when your mom was growing up. <laughs> so uh, give us a, a little bit of history. Sure. Well, uh, the theater opened uh, May 7th, 1942, and it operated through the uh, 80s and closed in 1988. And uh, at that time, there, it sat empty for a couple of years, and then a group of, of local downtown folks put together a campaign to raise some money and purchase the Admiral Theater. Uh, the city actually bought it from the Bremer Trust, and um, then, then we raised the money, $4.2 million did a renovation, and uh, we've been operating now for about 18 years. It's a beautiful facility. If you haven't been there, you've got to come and check it out. And we were told, there's tours going on this summer, so come and check out the Admiral Theater. Yeah, we're, we just started doing daily, weekly tours. Uh, if you're interested in checking out the theater, maybe even backstage, just come down or give us a call. Yeah, great. Uh, so, Brian, you know, busy, busy season. The Admiral season is usually fall through spring, mm -hmm. and then summer kind of goes down a little bit, but there's still great activities. Concerts, activities for kids, you can get married in here, you can have a retirement party. It's, it's a multi-purpose facility. Right, we, uh, our season runs the first weekend in October through the first weekend in June. And then we're a little bit quieter in the summertime, but we still do a lot of things. We uh, host weddings and uh, class reunions, a lot of those. Yep, yep. And then we do some events of our own. We, do, we have some shows coming up and then we also do um, uh, we have a summer camp for kids which runs two weeks in August. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's August 10th through the 22nd. 
and it's a great deal where we have about 50 or 60 local kids and then at the end of the two weeks they put on a full-scale musical production on yeah, our stage. Yeah, that's so. cool. I was looking at your website because my grandson's interested, so I was checking it out and it looks like the fella that's putting that all together is got, he's He's got knowledge and yeah. training. Right, Richard Padro is the director of our summer camp and he's a, he's an actor, he's been on soap operas and film and a lot of things, commercials, and uh, he does a great job putting that whole program together. Oh, that'll be just absolutely fun. Uh, what are some things we can look forward to though this summer as far as performances? We have a performance on July 16th, it's a family show, it's a group called Big Bang Boom and it's a great family show we're going to do that i think seven o'clock on the 16th of july and then we've got uh stand-up comedian jubal flag will be here on the 18th of july now i don't know who he is but our camera guy lit up when we <laughs> said his name i guess he's local he's a seattle DJ, radio dj yeah. radio dj and I guess he's pretty funny. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and then um, also Kitsap Opera will be doing a performance of Carmen at the theater. There are dates uh, through the end of July. And you can check out our website for all those, that information. Excellent. Brian, there's lots of activity down here. You know, come to, come to the Admiral Theater, go out and have dinner either before or after, have some drinks. But if nothing's going on at the Admiral, what's another option for folks? Well, our good friends down at Sea Film uh, have movies every night, and uh, I think matinees as well. And they've got ten theaters. It's a beautiful place. If you haven't checked it out, it's uh, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. They have summer theater for kids. It's like summer camp or something. You pay a dollar, and you can see these great movies that kids would enjoy all summer. If you haven't been to Sea Film, you've got to check it out. It's it's. It is the best place to see movies, unless it, you go to Seattle. And they have the VIP theater, too. Have you been there? I love that place. That's a good... That's a good. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a little cocktail. You can have, that's right. And, and no kids allowed. It's just adults. It's a great place to see a movie. Sea uh, Film is on the corner of 4th and Park. Free parking below the theater. But you need to come and check out the Admiral. Please check it out. It is very, very nice. It sounds fabulous. It the uh, performances are always great so can you tease us a little who's coming in the fall that Char would love uh, there are some that you'd love but I won't, I won't tell <laughs> oh, you no can't hints say that. <laughs> oh darn it darn it Brian give us some information on tickets how do we get information how do we get them you can go to our website admiraltheater.org and all that information is up on there for the upcoming season you can buy tickets that are coming up this summer and um, also one show that I didn't mention the Senate is uh, yeah, August 6th, fun. they're a fantastic band. We've had them in the source before, but they're gonna be in the main theater, so. Excellent, excellent. Great, don't forget admiraltheater.org. Check out everything that's happening over the summer and what's coming up next season. Brian, you're awesome, thanks a lot. Thanks, Charlene. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Inside Bremerton. We're on 4th Street in front of the El Bacon restaurant. If you haven't heard about this place, you better come and check it out. With me is Priscilla Garcia. Priscilla, how long have you worked at the El Bacon? Uh, I've been working with them for two years now. Mm -hmm. and Give us a little bit of history. How did it all start? Isn't the man, the fellow's name is Mario. Yeah. How did he get this whole thing started? So it was Mario and Ophelia, actually. They started in Tacoma, selling out of their um, apartment, balcony, actually. Oh, no. Please. Yeah, so that's why the <laughs> name stuck with us. Um, so they started selling tacos, you know, just for their family and friends. They got so popular, you know, they got the idea to start an actual business. So they came down to downtown Bremerton, right by the shipyard, um, next, kind of next to the Bar and Grill, Bremerton Bar and Grill. So they started selling under a tent, you know. We, our menu back then was really small just like street tacos and um, a few burritos ready to go. Um, the name got out, you know, everybody started going crazy for our food and uh, <laughs> we got the place now, which is a little hole in the wall kind of place. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're being- It's a hole in the wall that people flock to. People yeah. <laughs> are lined up out the door at lunchtime, at dinner time, and it's because the food is not only affordable, it's not very expensive, but it is the best. <laughs> One of the people walking down the street before we started recording said, this is the best food in the state. Thank you, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> that's 
awesome. That's awesome. We love to hear compliments Tell like that. Tell us about the food, Priscilla. Tell us about it. What is kind of... Is so, it? Um, it's a fusion of Mexican and Salvadorian food. Um, so, we offer a variety of uh, tacos, quesadillas, burritos, tortas. And then from the Salvadorian side, you got those traditional pupusas, which uh, everybody's talking about them now, which is oh, pretty awesome, you know. Yeah. They are stuffed tortillas with pork and cheese inside of them. We got a lot of different flavors, all the traditional condiments. It's delicious. Like, very I'm Salvadorian, so I can tell you anything about the Salvadorian food and the Mexican food, so. Very, very yeah. good. Priscilla, when you're not eating at the El Bacon, where do you eat downtown Bremerton? So I usually like to go to the Bremerton Bar and Grill. I Excellent. like to go to Noah's Ark. And if you're looking for a really good coffee and a breakfast burrito, you go to Coffee Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, yeah. very good. Please check out the El Bacon. It's one of the many restaurants and they're popping up all over our town. Yeah. Please check it out. You'll see Priscilla there. She'll greet you. She'll remember what you eat. Yes, like <laughs> us on Facebook and Instagram. There you go. <laughs> Thanks so much. We'll Thank be right you guys. Back to close up our show. Thanks a lot. Well, that's it for Inside Bremerton today. I hope you got some ideas about some fun things to do this summer. I also want to point out the museums we have downtown. We have the Navy Museum, Puppet Museum, Kitsap Historical Museum, and the Turner Joy, technically a museum, floating museum. It's a ship. You want to check those things out. Shopping galore. And also, I want to remind you that there's numerous restaurants downtown you can eat less expensive to very expensive. Little holes in the wall like the El Bacon that where we talked to Priscilla or Anthony's right on the waterfront. So be sure to check out downtown Bremerton. Join us at one of the very special events going on, the concerts, the festivals. We'll see you downtown and thanks for joining us today.